Generate Blocks has been giving us a ton of new functionality, but one of the things I know people still complain about that's missing from the system is some kind of carousel. Now I imagine that's on the roadmap and will happen fairly soon at this point, but in the meantime, I came across a really nice solution that I think will tide us over and works extremely well inside of Generate Blocks. So I've started working on this website here. We can see a hero section and a little bit about the company. And then we get down to this list of maybe let's call it a feature section. We have a grid of all these cards and it takes up a ton of vertical real estate here. And I thought this might work better inside of a carousel. So I went hunting for a good carousel solution since Generate Blocks doesn't have one built in. And I came across this article by Phil. And in this article, he explains how to use the Flickety JavaScript library to enable the carousel functionality inside of a generate block site. So we're going to be referencing this article as we go through. I've been testing this out and it seems to work really well. I'm pretty excited about it. And as you'll see in this video, it's pretty simple to implement. So let's jump in and take a look at what we need to do first. So here inside the editor, I'm going to go down to this grid slash carousel section. And you can see I have this CSS grid that's taking care of putting these in three columns and then each one of these containers inside of it. Now, the first thing we need to do is get rid of that CSS grid that I have set on this container here. So we'll go into the settings into layout and I'm going to just change that display back to default, which is going to make all of this look terrible for now, but we need to have this set up. So we'll go ahead and save those changes because we're going to need to add some PHP to our site. If we go back to Phil's article here, you can see in step one, he has this little snippet of code that will allow us to enqueue this flickety carousel, both the JavaScript and CSS we need right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. We'll go back to the back end of our website here in appearance under theme file editor. I'm going to go ahead and add this to my themes function.php file. I'm doing this because I'm using a child theme. If you're not using a child theme, you'll want to use some kind of snippet plugin. But here, since I know any updates won't override this, I'm just going to go ahead and paste in that little code snippet that I grabbed off of Phil's blog post. I'm going to include a link down in the video description below that will show you three different ways you can enqueue this. What Phil gave us here inside of his post is great, but the problem is, is it's going to enqueue that JavaScript on every single page, regardless if we're using a carousel or not. Of course, there are a lot of different scenarios you might be using carousels. Maybe it's on a single page or multiple pages. So I tried to cover the different ways you might want to use this. And all of those code snippets are linked down in the video description below. This will ensure that you're only loading this JavaScript in the places you need it and will help reduce any bloat from the system. But for demo purposes, this is going to work perfectly. So I'll go ahead and update those changes. Back inside the editor, now all I need to do is add a couple classes and some data attributes. So we'll open up this structure again. We'll go into our container here, which is what wraps all of our cards. And we're going to give this the class of carousel. So I'll go ahead and create that class and we'll just start blank. Now inside of that, each one of these carousel items, each one of the cards inside of there needs a class as well. So I'm going to click on the first one, hold shift, click on the last one. That will make sure I have all of those selected. And I'm going to add the class carousel cell. So carousel dash cell to all of these cards. And you'll see if I click on any of them individually, that class has been added. Now, the last thing we need to do here inside the editor is go back to our container, which is the one we gave the class carousel to. We'll go to the settings cog and we'll scroll down here to advanced and under the HTML attributes. So what you're going to want to give this is data hyphen flickety, F-L-I-C-K-I-T-Y. And then in the value, we're actually going to grab this from Phil's blog post. So I'll scroll down here and we have this set of instructions here, which has the data attribute. I'm going to grab everything starting with this left curly bracket, scroll over and grab everything to that right closing curly bracket. I don't want those quote marks inside of it. Go ahead, highlight that and copy it. And we'll go back in here and I'm just going to paste that value into the HTML attribute and hit OK. Now we can go ahead and save those changes. And if we go view our site on the front end and refresh, we can see we have a bit of a carousel starting to take shape. We have some arrow buttons here and dot navigation at the bottom, although this isn't styled exactly how we want. So for that, we just need to add a bit of CSS. I'll go in here to the customizer and additional CSS. And in here, we can add some of the CSS that Phil provided inside of his blog post. If we scroll down here to step three, where we have configure the slider, he's given us the CSS we need for both a two column setup or a three column setup. In this case, I think I like the three column better. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight all that code, 
copy it. We'll go back here into the customizer, scroll down to where we can see our carousel, and I'll just go ahead and paste that in. Now you can see it looks a little bit funky here inside the customizer, but if we go ahead and publish those changes and view it on the front end, we can see our slider is starting to come together here. Our dot navigation will take us between these three groups of posts and our arrows will scroll us back and forth as well. One of the reasons I really like this flickety carousel is all the CSS is really easy to style. You can see when I hover over these buttons here, those arrows are disappearing and I really don't like the arrows inside of my cards like that. Well, we can change all of that using CSS and again, filled to the rescue here as he gave us some of the CSS he uses. So I'm going to scroll down here to the step four, customize the styling, and I'm just going to grab all the CSS he put inside his post. We'll go ahead and copy that. We'll go back in here to the customizer into our additional CSS, scroll down to where we can see that, and I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. Now, because I'm kind of zoomed in here for the demo, we can't see those arrows. They have moved, but if I close this, you can see the arrows are here just on the outside of our cards, which I like a whole lot better. We still have the issue, obviously, when we hover over these arrows, they're not quite the right color, but we can take care of all of that inside the CSS he provided. Here we have the CSS for the page dots, and here for the dots themselves, he set that to be a black color. I'm gonna use a variable from my color palette, which is this neutral 200 color. That's gonna work well with the rest of the colors on my website. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy that, and I'm gonna reuse this here for the flickety buttons as well. These are the left and right arrows, which maybe if I zoom out here, we can see. If I go ahead and paste that in, now it's using that same color here from my color palette. Of course, we have this hover issue. So if we go down here on flickety button hover, we'll just add a new line here. And I'm gonna grab that same color declaration here. We'll paste it in and maybe I'll change this to 100 on hover just so it gets a little bit darker as we hover. In fact, I might just bump this up to 300 which will make it a little bit lighter and make it easier to see that hover effect. We'll go ahead and publish those changes. Go back again to the front end. And we can test this out. There's actually nine slides inside of this, and if we scroll through here, it's gonna take us to the second set of three and here to the last set of three. Now, there's a couple cool things you can do, and Phil, again, has detailed all of this in his blog post. We can adjust that data attribute to do different things to the slider. One of the things I wanna do is have this continue to scroll all the way through so that once we get to the end, it goes back to the beginning. And that's actually done with this wrap around data attribute. You can see right here, we have wrap around false. We could change that to true and that way it will wrap around. So we'll go back into the editor here, make sure we're on that carousel container. And here inside that data attribute, if I just scroll over to the end, you can see right now our wrap around is set to false. I'm gonna change that to true. We'll go ahead and press that check mark and hit save. And now when we refresh on the front end and scroll down, as we get through to our third slide, we can still hit that right arrow again, and it will just take us back to that first page. This just lets us navigate things a little bit easier, and I think makes it a little bit more user-friendly. Now, we do have an issue with responsive settings here. If I go into my responsive view, you can see these three columns are starting to look squished here on tablet, but when we get down into some kind of mobile view, you can see they really don't look good here, but we can take care of all of that using just a little bit of CSS inside of a media query. So we'll exit that here. We'll jump back into the customizer into our additional CSS. And just here under where we set up those three columns, I'm gonna give ourselves a little bit of space to add these media queries. What I wanna do is set it up so that it's two columns on tablet and just one column on mobile. So to write that media query, I'm gonna type in at media. I'm gonna open and close my parentheses. And in here, I'm gonna do a max width of 1024 pixels. That's the value we need for our tablet view. We'll go ahead and open and close our curly brackets. And then I'm just gonna grab all this CSS here and copy it and paste it down here. Now on the three column, we're using a 33%. On two column, of course, we just want these to be 50%. Now, because the gap in between our cards, we wanna change this from two divided by three to one divided by two. This will just make sure it respects our gaps in between each one of those cards. So you can see we still have three cards here, but when we go down to our tablet version and scroll down, now you can see we just have two cards which we can drag around here however we need. Again, if we go to mobile, these are looking pretty squished. So I'm gonna grab this entire media query that we wrote and copy it to my clipboard. We'll paste it down here and we're gonna change that max width to 768, which is our mobile breakpoint. 
And here we can just change this width to 100%, which will just make sure that these take up 100% of the width. Again, the preview in the customizer here looks a little bit funky, but if we go back into the front end of the website and open up our inspector again, we're down here at the mobile breakpoint, and you can see we have one card taking up the full width here, of course, with our dot navigation down here at the bottom. Of course, with carousels, you can definitely run into some accessibility issues. As I've been testing this out, and I'm not an accessibility expert, but if I tab through this web page and end up on this carousel, I can use the left and right keys on my keyboard to navigate through this. I can also tab through to these navigation buttons, which seems to work perfectly. The only thing I'm struggling with is how to have this announce on screen readers. If you do it right now, it will just read through everything inside this group, which I don't think is correct. So I'd love to hear some feedback from the accessibility experts, I'd be happy to provide a link to this demo so you can test it out and give us some direction on what we'd need to do in order to make this just a little bit more accessible. Like I said, it's a problem with the way it's reading out, but you're actually able to navigate through this pretty easily, which I think is a huge bonus here. I think this Flickety library works really great. It does all the features I need out of a carousel, and it's super simple to style with CSS. But what's even better than that is we're just adding classes to elements inside Generate Blocks, which means we can make other things carousels as well, including something like a blog post carousel. A huge shout out to Phil for putting together this blog post with such an amazing resource. I'll make sure to link that down in the description below, along with the little tweaks I made to be able to enqueue this script a little bit more granularly. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe and we'll see you then.